Hi everyone, welcome to episode 8 of Ferocious Finance, presented by Magic Gathering Strat. I'm your host, Ferocious Llama. Uh, today I'm back with a all new group of buy and sell recommendations, as well as a little bit of, uh, uh, well, what I wanted to talk about this week was uh, actually Wizards of the Coast. Now, I don't know if any of you made it over to the mtgolibrary.blogspot.com blog, but last week uh, someone posted a blog post that uh, had a link to glassdoor.com um, which is a website where people who are currently employees and former employees of various companies can rate the uh, employer say you know I would recommend this to a friend I approve the CEO you know basically give like a rating of the company <clears throat> from like insiders and this is really interesting because when you look at the glassdoor.com ratings for Wizards of the Coast they're, they're, it kind of makes me laugh a little bit because the only ones that are good are the people who still work there and the only ones and, and, and the other thing about that is the ones who still work there they always they talk oh they're creative people they're great people to you know they're, they're creative people that are fun to work with and fun to be around or funny or whatever but that's the thing is they're saying, yeah, I like these people. They're saying, I like my coworkers. Okay, fair enough, you like your coworkers. But what you're not doing is, because uh, I've always had this thing, and I've always said about Wizards of the Coast Management, is it's terrible because it's a bunch of math nerds with PhDs in math running a company. And yeah, they should be designing the games, they should be researching and developing the games, but they should not be affecting the operations of the company. And one of the common pl complaints that I read on Glassdoor.com was about how sales and marketing uh, goes to the web team. Well, most of the complaints were from like the web designer type, or not web designer, rather the uh, pro, like uh, coders <clears throat> for the for the MTGO. And they all complain that sales and marketing has like an unbelievable amount of power. And they'll say, oh, we want this. And the software people will be like, why? That's stupid. You shouldn't, you shouldn't want that. Like, why, why are you dictating how it should be done? Because that's not the way to do it. And what ended up happening, what ends up happening when that happens is, okay, I get it. Wizards of the Coast has a brand. Okay, and that's, in this case, it's Magic Gathering. And yeah, you, you don't want to screw your brand up because your brand's very valuable to you. Right? Fair enough. But... What sales and marketing needs to do is say, we want it to be like this. And if they can't do that, then you need new sales and marketing, number one. Um, and number two, you shouldn't dictate, how are we going to reach this goal regarding the software? You're going to say, I want the software to do this to reach our overall branding goal. So anyway, it sounds like it's just a poorly managed company, and I've always said this about Wizards of the Coast: is it's a it's a bunch of math nerds, and they you know the guys who stay there the longest and who are the most well liked get promoted, and uh, you know bad management is rampant in America, and uh, I think it's one of the companies that's poorly managed, and you know I've even said it I've even said it uh, a few times is hey why don't they just go and pay someone like a quarter million dollars a year and make him like a high level, you know, vice president or director or something and like have him be a management guy that's just only good at management, doesn't know a thing about video, about board games, collectible games, video games, nothing. He's just a pure business guy. Um, cause, cause you know, I, I mean, I'm sure that wizards, uh, here's what the problem is. It's like, let's look at like, like professional sports teams. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try not to rant and rave about this too long, but professional sports teams, for example, it's what I call like a superstar environment where the players are freaking amazing, right? They're, they're the best in the world at what they do. No one else can do it like that, even the coaches and their management. And, you know, for this particular example, we're going to treat pretend like the coaches are the managers of the players, which sort of they are. They're responsible for their performance. And basically, okay... It, it wizards when they get their game devi designers, their little math nerds who design their game, which is great, good for them, right? And they're good, they're super phenomenal at it. Wizards says, "Guy, they're so good at that. We should put them in charge of something." But that's like taking a basketball player who's great at basketball and saying, "Guy, he's so good at that. We're gonna make him a coach." And that's the thing that people don't understand, and that's that's part of bad, bad, bad management is. You think, oh, he's the best at it. Let's make him in charge of that. No, no, you shouldn't. That's a terrible idea. 
Um, but anyway, if you haven't read that article, go check it out. I recommend it. Um, uh, it was a really, really interesting read uh, when I read all the reviews. Uh, and it really confirmed what I already thought about Wizards. And hey, I'm not saying they don't make a great game. I love the game. love Magic the Gathering. It's a fun game. Great to play. Um, it's awesome. However, I, I've always said this, that I think the company is probably pretty poorly run. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's get into some buy and sell recommendations for this week. Alright, our first buy recommendation this week is Badlands. Uh, I know I have the revised edition, uh, posted, uh, which I know isn't even available on Magic Online, because it would be from Master's Edition. Anyway, uh, I'm talking about the Vintage Master's version. Um, $3.61 the time of the recording. Um, pick them up. It's a dual land. People love dual lands. Everyone loves dual lands. And it's kind of, uh, me and Dan were talking about it the other day, and we were kind of discussing, like, price memory. And it's like, people say, guy, those were expensive. And then they become expensive. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it has to do with the... I mean, it does make sense, but upon initial inspection, it does not. But it's uh, uh, like a price memory is what it is. And people say, God, that's... that." It's just like the Power 9. Is They're not terribly rare online. Uh, I don't care what anybody tells you, they're not. There's no... There's really... Other than people think, oh... Oh, that card is that's the most expensive card in the game. That's why Black Lotus is the most expensive card online. Um, it's probably one of the rarer cards, uh, only because the the rarity is you know special. But uh, anyway, uh, all the cards, especially when they go off print, uh, it's going to go up. Because uh, I remember before Vintage Masters came out, Badlands was over ten bucks. Um, and that's a pretty hefty profit there. So, yeah, you know, it might take three, six months, but I think within one year you'll have, you know, over $10 on this. Um, probably over $12. Um, and you'll be doing well. And it really depends on, of course, the health of Vintage and the health of Legacy. Um, but it seems to me like Vintage is kind of, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not modern, because modern, like, any time of day you can find someone to play with online, like I've done it before, like 4 a.m. on a Tuesday. Uh, in Southern California, at least. And uh, I've done it at 2 a.m. in Southern California, too. I mean, any time of day. I can I can get up, go to my computer, and play a game of Modern Online. Um, and it seems it, it's not the case with Vintage right now, but uh, there are a lot more people playing um, Vintage and Legacy now than they were before Vintage Masters came out. So pick up your Badlands. Uh, I think it's a great buy. Our next buy recommendation is Scrubland. Uh, Scrubland's currently, of course, uh, revised edition pictured, but what I, uh, I'm talking about the Vintage Masters version. Um, Scrubland, $2.57 currently. I'm going to say go ahead and buy this, and it's because... Now, this is a true story. When I first got into Magic Online, I went and I bought some Scrublands, because I was like, I'm going to get a set of dual lands. But... Uh, just because I've always wanted them. I mean, I had them in paper, and then I sold them all um, back when they were, you know, 12 bucks a piece or whatever, and I regret that a little bit. But uh, I was playing Magic, and then I got out of it. And long story. Anyway, uh, so I have some Scrublands. They were 7 bucks, is what they cost. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. That was something else. That was uh, Plateau I bought for 7 bucks. Scrubland is... They were like $10.06. I... I don't know why I remember that suddenly, but I do. Uh, $10.06. And uh, that was before Vintage existed online. And when Legacy was still very small online. So yeah, it's not a blue dual land. But uh, you know what it is. is It's a popular land that sees play. And uh, with... See, now everybody's like, well, wait, wait, wait. So it's going to go up to $10 and that's it. No, it's probably going to go higher than $10, and here's why. Because with the recent boost of uh, the use of, you know, dual lands uh, in Vintage, because it wasn't there before, is now there, so there's more demand for the cards, because more people play Vintage than before. If one person plays now and zero people played before, more people play Vintage than before. And of course, the number is obviously bigger than one. And, because I play Vintage, and I played against someone else so uh there's at least two right but anyway the whole thing is that um 
and Legacy has gotten a huge boost too. I mean, Lion's Eye Diamond, it doesn't even see play in Vintage. I don't think I've ever seen it played in Vintage at all. Um, I mean, you know, some crazy weird Rogue Brew or something, but not like in like regular, like a, a, an established Vintage deck. I don't think I've ever seen Lion's Eye Diamond. So I think that that was the purpose of that was, oh, it's Vintage Legal, but let's let's print it in Vintage Masters because whatever we want we want to boost legacy that's kind of what i think they're doing and honestly if you ask me um i i think uh legacy masters is upcoming so i don't know 2015 or 2016 legacy masters is going to be the online uh online set uh and and whichever one it's not will be you know if it's 2015 then 2016 will be vintage uh not vintage masters 2 it'll be uh modern masters 2 or vice versa, 2015 will be Modern Masters 2, and 2016 will be Legacy Masters. That's what I think, unless they just keep doing Vintage master sets, and that's that. Um, and they just keep trying to boost, uh, you know, boost Legacy up by using uh, Vintage cards. But then again, cards like Days, like, the, I, I saw it played once, like, the first week online uh, in Vintage. You, you don't really play Days in Vintage. So I, I kind of think that's why they're going to have... Uh, that's just one more little fact that goes with why they're going to have a separate Legacy Masters rather than just keep doing Vintage Masters because everything has is legal in Vintage and just putting Legacy cards. So anyway, Scrublands, pick them up. They're going to go up to at least 10 bucks and probably more because more people are playing Vintage and Legacy than before. Our next buy recommendation is Soul of Innistrad. Uh, it's currently $1.53 uh, Mythic Rare from M15. Now, this is interesting because we, we kind of, between last week and this week, we think it's kind of getting safer to go to certain cards, and we think Soul of Innistrad is one of those cards that's, like, it's so good. I mean, it gives you great value. Even if it gets killed, or you have to discard it, or whatever, it still returns up to three creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, and exiles itself from your graveyard. So... Uh, we think it's a it's it it seems like a really powerful card, and uh, I don't know. We kind of lately have been on this. Uh, we we've been feeling like uh, uh, with Urborg, Soul of Innistrad, and all these different uh, black cards uh, that black might be good uh, coming up. So, I mean, there's a little bit of speculation there, but the fact of the matter is, it's a dollar fifty three mythic rare. Uh, we think the prices on M15 are kind of starting to bottom out, and we think Soul of Innistrad is one of those ones, uh, you know, it's pretty rare, because, like, at this point, all the Mythics in M15 are, like, quote-unquote crap Mythics, um, you know, that are worth a couple bucks, except for uh, uh, Garrick uh, Apex Predator, which is, like, I think it's, like, seven bucks, and then Nyssa, which is, I don't know, 20 bucks or something, but uh, why are, all of them can't be crap Mythics, <laughs> In fact, it's usually about uh, one third of them are crap mythics, and the rest are pretty good. So um, we think Soul of Innistrad will definitely make that pretty good cut. Uh, there's a two thirds chance we're right. So uh, even if uh, we were just rolling a die, there's a two thirds chance. Uh, but based on what we've looked at, what we see, we think that uh, Soul of Innistrad is uh, it's a good buy right now. I mean, it's a really good value. Uh, you know, for an M15 Mythic. Yisan, or Yisan, the Wanderer Bard, uh, is our next buy recommendation. He's currently a nickel on Magic Online. And uh, if you look at his ability, he's kind of like not... He's not as good as Birthing Pod. But it seems like that's Wizard's new thing with uh, uh, creatures is they give them some ability like similar to some other card that's like awesome in Modern. And I think that kind of is, like, it's sort of reminiscent. So, um, so I don't know. But I think that uh, basically you tap him, put a counter on him, and search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the number of counters on him. Um, anyway, he's only a nickel right now. And I think he's kind of one of those cards where he's a rare from M15. And I think he's one of those cards where, look, Rares that are in standard don't go lower than a nickel. That just doesn't happen. Um, it never happens. So, the chance of you losing money on this is like zero. 
uh, but at the same time, it's got a really, uh, it's got a mechanic that's reminiscent of something awesome. And yeah, I'll admit that a lot of times it's not as good. It's obviously not as good as the original. It's not as good as Birthing Pod. Uh, but let's look at like, let's go back and look at cards like, let's look at Strip Mine. Yeah, yeah, I know that was a long time ago. Strip Mine was you sacrifice it to destroy any other land. Yeah, that's great. And it was too good. So they said, we're going to fix this. So they printed Wasteland. And they were like, oh, this is too good too. So then they said, okay, okay, okay. How about this? How about this? Let's print one that you can't use unless they have four more lands in play. And it only does non basic lands. It was says, okay. And that's Technotic Tectonic Edge. So they got it right on the third try. But Birthing Pod was just is just too good, probably. I mean, it's a great card. Um, and so they're trying to, quote-unquote, fix it. And I think this is their attempt at something like that. And, hey, you never know. It might not be completely fixed. It might still be f totally awesome. So, um, you know, you're not going to lose any money. So I, I would pick some up. I picked some up already. So uh, pick yours up, and, um, you know, they might go up. Um, it just seems like a good card. It's going to be... Uh, especially with with now that we have new information about cons, by the way, which is it's going to be like a shard block with like names, and it's going to be two allied colors and then an enemy color, uh, an enemy to both of them, um, and the main one's going to be one of the two allied colors, and then like the other two colors are going to be like minor colors in the in the shard, I guess. So um, I don't know. I think. Um, it, I, to me, that sounds like kind of like it's going to be um, like a, um, you know, like a weenie block still. I mean, maybe not weenie, but um, uh, that's kind of how I feel. I feel it's going to kind of feel, have a feeling kind of like Onslaught Block did, is what I, that's what I think. And, you know, hey, I could be wrong, but that's what I think. That's why I'm making this recommendation. So, Yisan or Yisan or whatever, the Wanderer Bard. Our first sell recommendation for this week is Legion Loyalist. Legion Loyalist sees a lot of play in Standard, and uh, you know, in I've seen them in modern, quote unquote, Goblin decks, which uh, they're just not good enough without. Uh, by the way, just on another note, modern Goblin decks will never be good until they have uh, something like. Um, uh, well, they need like Goblin Pile Driver. That's like a must-have, and like Goblin Sharpshooter. That's like a must-have, and then Goblin War Chief. That's really that's really the biggest one is the War Chief, because uh, it makes them all cost less and it makes the deck really explosive. But anyway, point of the story is Legion Loyalist. He's a Goblin, and he sees a lot of play in standard. He's currently four dollars and thirty cents. Now I remember back in like March or something, um, maybe earlier than that, he was like a dollar, and uh, so I don't know. He's four dollars and thirty cents. Get rid of him now. Uh, if I was doing the show back then, I would have told you buy him back then and sell him now. So uh, he's going to rotate. He's going to drop. So get rid of him. Life Pain Zombie is our next sell recommendation. He's currently $2.60. And Life Pain Zombie, I call him the M14 Thrag Tusk. Not because he does anything even remotely similar to Thrag Tusk, uh, other than that, you know, he's a creature. Uh, but what Thragtus did was Thragtus was awesome in standard, uh, great card, super good. Everybody loved it. Everybody played it. But then rotated out of standard, and it was worth nothing. Not nothing, but you know, compared to what it was worth, I think it was whatever I I, I talked about it a few weeks ago. It was uh, over ten bucks, thirteen, eighteen bucks, something like that. And then it went down to like a couple of dollars or a dollar afterwards after it rotated. Life Bean Zombie is this uh, also, except it's not $18 or $13, it's $2.60 currently, but it was up to, I think, 8 or 10 bucks or something for a while there. So go ahead and unload your Life Bean Zombies before they go to zero or a nickel, because that's what they're going to do. Because, well, they're only good in standard. So, Life Bean Zombie, sell them. Our next sell recommendation is Liliana of the Veil from Innistrad. Now, Liliana... Uh, has just been going up and up and up and up. And Liliana's actually uh, like, f I think it's like 75% or 66% more uh, more expensive online than in paper. It's like 60 bucks in paper and 100 bucks online. Why? I don't know. Um, actually, I do. It's because um, 
on, the online economy reacts super duper fast. Um, and, you know, we just got vintage. So everyone's, oh, got to have it, you know, kind of a thing. It's shiny new thing theory. But uh, anyway, Liliana's at an all-time high at 100 bucks, much higher than the paper price, which is pretty rare for Magic Online. Usually the paper cards are more expensive because uh, just more people play it. And the hard, older cards are harder to come by. But uh, And, you know, you have things like, oh, no, it got water damage, it got bent, it got torn, it got thrown away, it got lost. That doesn't happen on Magic Online because it's all when you log in, it's there already. But anyway, Liliana's at an all-time high. Um, and we, and here's here's the sell, the purpose for the sell recommendation. The reason is that what seems to be happening is, you know, Vintage Masters came out. All the Vintage cards went real cheap, the ones that were in Vintage Masters. Everything that wasn't in Vintage Masters went way up in price. Like, look at Wasteland. I think it's like over 150 bucks. And uh, Uliana's one of those cards that just went went up because it sees playing Legacy and Vintage. So, um, yeah, go ahead and uh, unload your Liliana's right now because we think that craze is over. I mean, even if you look at like other cards, like look at Sensei's Divining Top, it was shot up to ten bucks, and now it's down to like uh, like less than half that. It's like five dollars. Um, same thing with uh, Wasteland starting to drop a little bit. Um, I think it was at its peak, and now it's down. Uh, it's not down a lot, but it's kind of coming back down. So I think the prices are kind of starting to stabilize. I think this is an artificially f high price. So go ahead and unload Liliana of the Veil. Pack Rat is our next sell recommendation uh, from uh, Return to Ravnica. Uh, currently $1.78. And yeah, standard all-star, but he's another Thragtus. Sorry. Um, I've seen him in Modern occasionally, but... I really don't think that it's going to be... It's not going to be a card that's in a lot of Tier 1 modern decks. So, um, I, I don't think, at least. So, because uh, all the Tier 1 decks, there's... Let's see, our Tier 1 decks in modern are Splinter Twin and Birthing Pod. And, okay, Packer and Birthing Pod, maybe. maybe that's a possibility. I, I can see maybe. That's a maybe, right? But realistically, um, no. <laughs> it's not going in Splinter Twin, that's for sure. Um, and I think that's really the thing about, about Modern, is the reason it's not going to take off in Modern. I've seen it a few times, but I think the reason that like certain decks like Fairies aren't very good in Modern is in order to be competitive in Modern, and I've said this before, and I, I like Modern, I think it's a good format, the only problem is you must have, here's what you have to have in order to be competitive, you must have a combo kill. You cannot kill them just by playing magic. Yeah, you can, but show me the the two the two most popular tier one decks, whether it's Malira Pod or Kiki Pod or whatever. The purpose is you make infinity somethings, or you do something infinity times, and your opponent loses because of said infinity things done. I mean, you know, look at uh, 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 Splinter Twin. You make an infinity. Deceiver Exarchs or Pestermites. And then look at, uh, you know, Pod is, uh, you know, oh, I'll use my uh, uh, Kitchen Finks to make a, you know, gain Infinity Life Sue, you know. Or, oh, I'll use my, uh, I'll use my um, Murderous Red Cat to, you know, do two damage to you and then just keep doing that, you know. I mean, it's a combo kill. So anyway, Pack Rat is no part of any combo kill. So I, I don't think... Yeah, it could be like a good backup plan, like a good sideboard card. But anyway, uh, the reason I think... It, so it's not going to stick in like other formats. It's only going to... It's good and standard and that's it. That's end of story. So uh, sell your pack cards right now. Don't don't keep them. It's kind of... It's bad. They're going to go down a... You know, they'll be a nickel. In a year, they'll be a nickel. So sell them now. If you like them, buy them later for a nickel. Steam Vince is our last sell recommendation for this year. It is rotating out of standard. Um, that seems to be kind of the theme with... Uh, well, at least a couple of our cards. Uh, three, four, four of our five cell recommendations this week are because they're rotating. When they rotate, they go down in value. That's just a fact. Unless, you know, some kind of weird, like, vintage all-star, like, like Trigon Predator. I'm sure it was worth, like, I, I, everyone was like, oh, that's a good card. And I'm like, I, 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 it doesn't see play. They're like, it doesn't vintage. And I didn't play vintage back then. And so... Uh, not competitively, at least. So we would sit there and we talk about it. and We were like, "Yeah, you know, this is uh, this is interesting." So uh, uh, because the card didn't go down when it rotated. I mean, it was only an uncommon, but it didn't go down when it rotated because it was good in vintage. Which it's good once it's good in vintage, it's probably good for 
a long time in vintage. So anyway, that's um, uh, that's what we're saying. Sell Steam Vents. Get out of it. Pick it up after rotation. It will be cheaper than three dollars seventy six cents. And the other thing is, like you got to remember, when we talk about making money here. It's not even about like everybody thinks. Oh well, you have to buy it at you know three dollars and seventy six cents and sell it for two hundred percent higher than three dollars and seventy six cents. Assuming we're saying buy Steam Vents, which we're not. We're saying sell it. That's okay. But um, let's say you have. Uh, uh, Okay, let's say you have Steam Vents, and you paid three dollars seventy six cents for them. You sell them for three dollars seventy six cents. If you buy them again for a dollar, what you've really done is you've reduced <clears throat> in real estate what they call the cost basis, um, and that's a whole tax thing. You guys probably don't want to hear about that, but we can talk about it if you want because I love talking about it. Um, but anyway. Uh, it reduces your cost basis. So it essentially lets you have bought a card and had a card and used a card and then sold it and then bought it again for cheaper. So essentially what you can do is you can get the cards you want when you want them. So, now this is real risky, so I don't I don't typically recommend doing this for investment purposes. But if you're like a player and you want to play and the card's expensive, buy it and just sell it before it goes down. And then buy it again when it goes down. And then, you know, so you only don't have it at that window when it's going down. So that's kind of a, a good way to do it if you're looking to play. So, uh, but that's kind of a whole other thing. We're, we're really trying to give you the financial perspective of everything and forget that you play Magic uh, the Gathering. So anyway, sell Steam Vents. It's rotating. It's going to go down. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of Ferocious Finance. Presented by Magic Gathering Strat. As always, I am your host, Ferocious Llama. And if you like the show, go ahead check out our, our other shows. And if you want all my content delivered to you automatically, you can follow me on Twitter at MTG Confidant, or you can friend me on Facebook. Um, I am the MTG Confidant there as well. And I'm going to go ahead and put links to those in the show notes. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll talk to you next week. And please, please, please leave me a comment on. Uh, what you like, what you don't like, and you know, if you guys have any future topics you want me to talk about, just like general topics before we get to the buy sell recommendations, that would be great. I love doing that. So, um, talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.